genealogy, researching family history, is one of the most popular hobbies in this country, right up there with gardening. A nation of immigrants, we almost all come from somewhere else we wish we knew more about. So searching for our roots holds tremendous appeal. And today there's an exciting new addition to the genealogist's toolkit, genetic genealogy. It turns out that inside each one of us, within every cell of our bodies, is information about who our ancestors were, where they lived, and who we're related to today. Our DNA contains hidden stories about our past, and scientists, together with businessmen, are now offering ways to help us read them. Who am I? Why do I look the way I do? It's like discovering American history through yourself. The American history Vi discovered is a common one, it turns out. Geneticist Rick Kittles runs a company called African Ancestry that specializes in DNA testing for black Americans. He says a full one-third of the men he tests find out they have a white male relative somewhere back in time. How do people who find this out react? Some black men get upset and say, look, I'm black, look at me, I'm black. And, you know, and I say, yeah, you are, but this small segment of your DNA doesn't go back to Africa but to Europe. We are a mosaic of many different ancestors. We can go back several generations and there are hundreds of people who, thousands of people, who actually contributed to our DNA. And that's the rub. This business of genetic genealogy is fraught with limitations. For one thing, it can only provide information about a tiny fraction of our ancestry. Because we get half our DNA from our mothers and half from our fathers, almost all of our DNA gets shuffled and remixed every generation, making it impossible to trace what comes from whom. There are just two bits of DNA that remain pure. The Y chromosome, which passes directly from father to son, and something called mitochondrial DNA, which passes unchanged from mother to child. Hank Greeley, a law professor at Stanford University, has studied this new field. He worries that people don't realize just how many ancestors they actually have. Eight generations ago, both you and I had 256 great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents. Wait, you're saying that if you go back eight generations, uh -huh. we have 256 great-great-great-grandparents? Yes, it doubles every generation. So you've got two parents, you have four grandparents, you have eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents, and it adds up fast. It adds up so fast, in fact, that if you go back 20 generations, you've got over a million grandparents. 1,048,576, to be exact. And in each generation, DNA testing can provide information about only two of them. So you could be Peruvian on your mother's 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 side, Japanese on your father's father's <laughs> father's side, Swedish on everything else. <laughs> and you'll uh, never know. And you'll never know the Swedish from the Y chromosome oh or the God. mitochondrial DNA. Now you've looked at several of these companies that are doing these tests. Yes. Do you think that they explain what you just explained to us? No. Uh, I don't think any of them does as good a job of pointing out the limitations. but. You know, businesses often don't go around telling you how weak their product is. We don't oversell. I mean, we just say, look, we provide a service. If you're interested in exploring a tiny bit of your DNA and trace its ancestry, we can do that. When you say it's a tiny little amount? It's less than 0.1%. And that's pretty teeny. 